recording. Okay. I oh, should. Great. Okay, that is going. All right, uh, Brian, just speak. Yo. Like to test, like one, two, three. Uh, Let me make test sure. one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Okay. Let me. Uh, I'll put myself down and put that up. All right, try again. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, okay. three. That's better. All right, I think that should be good. All right. Uh, we just want to go through. How many sets do you have? You have this one, then another one, and then another. Uh, three one. sets. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now I, I'm going in these blind. I haven't really uh, gotten back to see everything, but we can we can kind of go through what your idea is first of like where your mindset is for the matchup, and then we can mm -hmm. kind of see where you incorporate that and maybe where we can uh, like kind of improve on some of them. Because the overall, when we think of this game, we think of like what we want to like how we win before we even go into the matchup, right? Um, yeah. You kind of have to visually see who you're playing. You have to see what that team can do. If it's something that you're not familiar with, there are at least some characters that you may acknowledge or at least have played before. So sometimes if you're a little unfamiliar with a play style or something like that, especially when you're learning, uh, it may be like kind of wise to like in a tournament set to get a snap in on like a character that you're more familiar with because you know what they can do. Um, in this particular case, uh, if Tim is indeed playing the Viper, uh, he is still relatively a little bit new to it. It's not, I wouldn't consider it like an overall threat right now because he's still learning, but he's gotten more used to his doom, right? Um, mm -hmm. You don't want to ever really get foot dove, you know, even though like your team is a better matchup for it, because he's a little more familiar with it, he can make, you know, things happen, even though you're more familiar with the matchup. Um, sometimes in like in this early stage of Marvel, learning by doing you know, just making sure they don't get a chance to do what they're more comfortable with is a better option. But in, like, a longer set, you know, if you're playing Tim, like, with the Viper, you want to, like, kind of see everything he's got. So doing different type of play styles where you snap in different characters or just let him rock for a bit, you can kind of, like, learn and adapt as you go and then, you know, see if uh, quick work, you know, raw quick work will work. But see if he's catching his toes with that. If he blocks it, great. I can go on to the next thing and then maybe throw it out like a magic of the hat, you know, or... You kind of have mm -hmm. to like kind of play around with some of these things, but in this tournament type of setting, um, if I see him play and like I'm kind of new and I know of what he's capable of, it's probably best to like kind of like wear down where his strengths are rather than you know suddenly he's kind of learning with you know the overall concept is in a tournament style we're here to win so we need to do everything we can to do that right yep so we'll get started. Um, this will just go straight into it so let's see he does indeed start with the viper okay i don't know if he goes into another thing but for now what is your like you see this right you obviously know he has the other team the virgil uh doom strider are you anticipating that he might switch to that you think did he say like anything like that or is he just focusing on this uh i didn't know what was going on i figured like this bracket like would be a good bracket to test out the beginning team mm-hmm the, because last time I played Tim, you played the Viper team. Oh. Uh, not the Viper team, sorry. The Virgil team. Yeah. So I wasn't sure what to expect going into this one. Okay. Overall, I think it's good that he's switching to this. Like, for his own, like, learning, I think going cold turkey within brackets is the best way to play. But when he wants to win, I'm sure he'll switch over to that. But for now, it seems like he's just wanting to improve on it, whether he wins or loses. So I, I do commend him that. But you're here to win. So we're going to win, right? Yep. Let's see what we do. Now, round start is a, a pinnacle for both teams. Um, Viper kind of can play the neutral game because she has the I-beam. She has a uh, Doom Beam as well. So she can kind of like force you to like take the chip early on. So both of these, where we kind of start off is a great way to tell like where the mindset is for the Viper player. Mm. If she's going to want to go in, she has already a bar to spend with, right? So that's kind of one of her biggest strengths is that she builds the bar and does the damage and can utilize the first part of her meter immediately at the 99 start. She has the bust out with the EX Thunder Knuckle. She has double jump into uh, cancels with dash downs with like jam session to go for a mix up. Uh, she has this in overhead. So she has a lot of ways to open you up and you're basically playing a keep away style character flat out. You know, you never really want to press the issue unless you have 
uh, stronger normals or something that they can't counter with. In this case, Viper's never really a great way to start with kind of going in as a Deadpool player. So you already seeing like going back is already a strong suit. And with her, it seems like she's already kind of going to a more neutral style for this one too. Maybe just try to feel and adapt to try to chip you out. Uh, she also is very aware of the Strider assist as well. Uh, she has ways to kind of punish that if she's more well versed with how to punish it. So she can get rid of Strider at almost any point. She does one Thunder Knuckle into another Thunder Knuckle, launch, and then S. That character's kind of dead. Um, so there are ways and benefits for both styles. But for you, at least for what you want to focus on, never really try to approach her. If she's kind of walking forward, utilize like the double jumps to like kind of jump forward towards her, double jump backwards to go back. So you can kind of like mix her up to see like where you're going to round start it. But mm -hmm. we're seeing like we're both playing to the full screen, right? So, okay. Let's, uh, let's go back just a bit. I want to kind of really take a good look at what we're doing here because immediately at the round start you're using your jump into your medium guns which is very good you know i've already kind of told you previously that that is your best form of neutral while calling your assist and it seems like you're doing it well here and timing your teleports to get the confirm with strider i do like that that is a very good way to like kind of start your offense um unfortunately with this particular round start uh, you just used one of your teleports, and you didn't yeah. get the hard knockdown. So you only have basically one more time to kind of go for that. And mm -hmm. you can't really, like, you always have to think that as a Deadpool player, right? Like, that's the really biggest, like, downgrade for playing this character. He has one of the best teleports that leads into a lot of opening scenarios. But because you start with that, now you're mm -hmm. at the back foot in the disadvantage that you, if you keep it in the back of your mind, you only have one. You only have one more layered mix up to start off with that strider you know so in this yeah. particular instance i would know that i have one left and i would try to like maybe just stick to my neutral you know try to feel it out you know and if she feels like she's gonna press on with me then using that second teleport while a neutral is better to like kind of get out if she's gonna press forward and it seems like she's already pressing the issue now because she already just <laughs> called jam session she already got a little bit of Dante damage and hers. She's already at the life disadvantage and she's building a little bit of bar. I feel like, okay, I, I tried to take a few seconds to see where he's at with the neutral. I'm, I might try to go in, you know, and that's where you can utilize that second teleport, you know? Yeah. All right. So you're still taking to the back, getting the grenades out. Yeah. Very good. Uh, and that's, as you saw, as we see, Strider, even on uh, the opening gambit here for the assist call, he is open to to attacks. So you went for yeah. a quick work to maybe like go for quick work, call Strider to then get the extension off. Like if you got the hit, that's a very good start too because it's a, a full screen low essentially and you can still cancel to that second teleport, which is very good. But in this particular instance here, uh, kind of go back just a little bit. You went for it, but... The quick work got hit with the thunder, uh, with the seismo, that one here, and then immediately canceling to the next one. Now Strider is about thirty percent health with just two seismos. That character will probably die if she had kind of pressed a little bit further, because she can kind of chain them into each other and basically get a kill off of any assist. Uh, if there was a little well more versed, maybe spending the ex thunder knuckle to kind of get in a bit more. She could have spent everything to get what, uh, rid of your character, but at least in this in this case, uh, he kind of let you live with that. But that's one of those like type of things where it just unfortunately didn't work out. But it was a great idea, you know. I think you were going for that quick work and to uh, extend with the Strider assist. So I I do think that was overall better. Yep. All right. So she's got a uh, jam session to kind of lock you in, and very nice to dash right under. And yeah, just the timing of the launch there. Um, I love the idea of the uh, jumping with your jabs. Jumping jab with Deadpool is very strong. Uh, just to kind of like, if they're pressing forward, that jumping jab is instant overhead, essentially. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like forces them to like either block it or they just take a little bit of hits. And that kind of disorients them, you know, like uh, what, I, what did I just get hit with? And they kind of have to reset on the fly. But then you kind of like counter that with your own jabs, letting your Dante do the work, which was very good. Just the timing of going into the jabs with 
uh, the jam session is just letting the jam session get all those hits in and then the yeah. follow back to then just do the launch here. Just unfortunately did the launch right before that last hit. So letting jam session just kind of do everything after your jabs. Just stand there, wait for them to like get that last hit and then fall back, then react with a launch. You know, then you have that, you know, confirmation. Yeah, who won yesterday? Uh, Tom. Me. Oh, nice. Good take, Russ. Thank you. Yeah, just to uh, let you know, Neos, we are recording for uh, for Brian. So if you want to get any additional inputs um, while we're going over review, uh, you're more than welcome to. Oh, okay. Uh, so here we have, uh, unfortunately, it was a drop. Uh, whether that was an intended drop or not, um, still now, anytime when you get hit, always kind of think to yourself, because even though like they may have dropped it, it's not necessarily your turn right yeah. um you're now in a situation where after you may recover from uh from a drop they could intentionally reset every time so that's something you have to keep in mind like they may have seemed like they dropped it but maybe they're just kind of resetting the opportunity because that was a little uh finicky of a hit and i could probably like dash underneath you if you're still like recovering in the air or something like that in this particular case um she got the hit and i think it was like a crouching jab but wouldn't convert to anything else yeah so thunder knuckle into jab maybe like wanted to go into a launch or whatever the case but it seems like they wanted to like kind of uh press the issue a little bit more uh see if you were maybe like trying to go for like uh guns or um a shuriken to kind of keep yourself a little more in distance they want to like kind of press the issue now that they got the hit even though it reset in this way it's like you could kind of like counteract with your own jabs in the air too like kind of get off me a little bit um but you always have to kind of be aware of these uh, quote-unquote intentional resets because you never know what they're going to do following up. If she wanted to, she could have just planked underneath you, call Jam Session, and then convert from there too. Or just do the same thing with Doom Beam and then just go back into neutral, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's always good to like kind of see where like where they're going to be at off of a reset and just kind of have to be aware of like, what you can do as, as your character. In this particular case, you had that option with the shuriken. You do have grenade, I guess, if you really wanted to. But that's uh, if they block that or was underneath the grenade, they could punish you. Or what you can do, because you're in the air and you reset, you have your jump still. You can always utilize your double jump off of recovery. And you can okay. use your wall jump there. So it seems like you're kind of like falling a little bit more like neutral down back. So you could still, even off of that, just jump out of the way and then just use your wall jump to give yourself a little bit more height. So from here, you're kind of holding back. She does block, uh, uh, fall down with jab. So that would have stuffed your jump, but that's another thing to kind of keep in mind of what you have, even off of just recovery for Deadpool. You still have yeah. your jumps. You can do utilize your wall jumps and you can use shuriken to kind of give yourself a little more freedom to throw that out, force a block and then get yourself back to neutral. Right. Yep. Something to kind of like think about, um, when you're, uh, when you're in those type of scenarios here so let's see now that we're both back to neutral now you're in a much better spot because you got away and now viper is full screen with three bars she's gonna have to dhc to give to save this character and guess what we got doom coming in if that's the case right and what is that that is basically a 9-1 to this matchup too this is extremely hard for doom so no matter what oh, okay. happens from here All three characters. whether you kill viper which is basically the idea uh, making sure that you don't have the point character to get things rolling or you get the doom in you could still take that neutral step and press on you know you could always like kind of utilize your full screen advantage you know th the fact that you have both an anti-air assist and also an anti-air jam session to force them to be locked in you have two great ways to keep them out as doom so no matter what happens here you're in a net positive right mm-hmm uh, one thing I want to add. No, oh, that was a bit of hard thing. So, um, in this situation, right, you know she's low, so she has two options, right? Either you DHC or you just go for a hard tag. So your job, I would say in this case, is probably to look for either one, and then you might even consider getting bringing in your aunt Dante DHCing in, because like your Deadpool has a lot of red life. Red life in this game is like another resource because it keeps your character healthy enough so you can bring it back in. And in this game, having your complete team is always ideal in yeah. every situation. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much it. 
All if right. B-Man wants to add anything. No, no, you're good. That, that's absolutely right. Yeah, the hard tag was where... Uh, that's definitely, like, the right call, and I guess, in this way, because uh, you were trying to, like, keep your neutral. Um, either way, you're still in that positive, but you could have gotten a little bit more longevity out of a hard tag situation like that. But you missed it. It's not a huge deal. You're still allowing yourself to kind of take control of the situation by going into neutral. And, yeah, you're kind of in the corner. But remember, you still have that one teleport. So you have this option, right? Like, you could stay kind of in the corner, use your jam session, and then dash out, do whatever you want. But the neutral stance of where you're at is you're already taking advantage of the situation here. So I still overall think this is a good idea, no matter what happens here. Okay. Uh, lucky for uh, lucky for Tim, he called the jam session while you were going for... Oh, I like that. Wow, that, that was, was really good. Yeah, that, that long-reaching slide, baby. It's... Uh, there's only one thing you could really convert off of, and that's S. So th you went for that Hail Mary, but it worked out because he wasn't blocking low, maybe trying to up back because they realized they were in the corner. They don't want to take the chip. You took advantage of that, and you capitalized that really well. But this is still, again, that's twice now where you went for the uh, for the quick work with that extension. But that's just second mm -hmm. time. It was just an unfortunate thing here. But I like this a lot because he got just about the corner. Like, being in the corner of this game is never right, too. Now let's, Unless uh, you're dull, Kevin. Let's review where, where your thought process is here, right? So, you got the hit. Now, at this stage, this character's dead, right? Yeah. You got this hit, no matter what happens, you DHC from your two bars, this character's dead, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We can get, level you up to get to the point where it's like the uh, extension with the DHC to get Dante's last hit in, you know, to like get that hard tag perfectly timed. But for now, we're like still in that learning stage. And I saw that you actually went for the snap. So you got the hit. I guess your idea is to Doom is still a bad matchup. I don't necessarily need to kill his character. I'll just spend one meter and then snap in Viper. Is that what you're going for? Yeah, pretty much. I figured Viper was like a bigger problem character mm -hmm. for me. And I, I, snap always in down take. Yeah. I always If you're going to snap, you should snap in down take. Because honestly, against this team, you probably just want Doom last. Because like he just gets bodied by all your characters. Like it's really hard for Zoom, mm -hmm. even with X. Okay. So like, if you want to like, if you want to play the snap game, like you kill Dante, Viper's gonna come in at half. You know, any hit should kill, and then Doom is just Doom. So okay, right? Yeah, that's something so. I really need to think more of. Is like yeah. half life and ninety nine percent. Um, it's really not that different. You can break down most teams and like like pick apart like how it works for you, like how to pick apart their team to make it like unideal for your opponent. And in this case, Doom being last, I learned this a lot from playing B-Man when he played Deadpool at his team. I asked this, almost unwinnable, like almost not, it's almost 10-0. It's, it's Marvel, so there's always a chance. But it's like, ideally, if like you're playing it right, there shouldn't be no chance. Yeah. Because like jam session with Deadpool, that's OD. <laughs> Doom can do very little about that. Mm -hmm. So, In this particular uh, case, no matter what decision <laughs> you kind of go for, is still a, a good thing whether you kill doom and then get the viper in early to then leave dante last dante last also is not that great of an anchor either but you know he still at least has more options than doom does so yeah in this particular case i probably would go for what neo said and just if you're already gonna snap in leave doom last because doom last over a full team is better and you'll get the touch on viper either way and you could even spend your x factor on dante if you wanted to if you weren't comfortable with like a hit mm -hmm. confirm Getting rid of that character is like that's fine. Like one one breath and Dante dies with an X Factor, right? Then one mm -hmm. touch off Viper after that. As long as she has an X Factor, get out of a situation. She's particularly dead, and you could stall out X Factor with this team because you keep away, right? Yeah. But overall, th this is still a good option no matter what happens. Getting rid of the Viper early, you don't want that character with plus bars. You you never want the bust out to happen. So this is still not not the worst idea, but it's still. Uh, Still a good thing. It's good. I like it. If I, if you want to optimize it more, that's another optimization you can make. Yeah, and there it is. Yeah. That's that's that could have led to a big problem. So here here's the overall idea um, with Viper. Right, the incoming is uh, the uh, quick work into jam session. Uh, he double jumped into it, so the timing of this was a little bit off because the snap you have to do it faster. Um, okay. I think you did, uh, let me just see, I want to make sure. I think it was medium uh, quick work. I'm just going to confirm it real quick. So, 
Yeah, that looks. I'm, I think that's medium. Um, it might be the dash up too. He dashed up a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to like kind of like layer that too. Like in this particular case, like you just kind of want to just do light because okay. in that spot, because of how quick uh, light quick work works, you know, literally, uh, it just goes straight into each other with the jam session call. Um, in this spot, unfortunately, you kind of had a. Uh, you had a little bit of damage off here. You didn't get the uh, the confirm. You got the guns here, and this is where this is where Viper shines. She's gonna bust out, right? Good mm -hmm. idea to go for the medium guns off of the jump, like to make sure she's not gonna jump. But this will hit both characters if you do it right. You know, if you if she was at a better uh, position, essentially this would basically kill you. Um, she would spend her second meter with the ex size mo because she can link both. Uh, all EXs to each other essentially so she can go with the Thunder Knuckle and then cancel that even though it, uh, technically it's like negative you can still cancel that into another uh, uh, EX Seismo. version of like Seismo or uh, Burn Kick and she can still confirm off of this so because from this situation you block that if she went for the chip out she could have like went to kill you in this way um, okay. that's something you always have to keep in mind of so in, in that spot probably just best to like kind of just don't even call your assists just kind of sit there and wait you know because you see viper with a bar always think in your mind she is going to bust out she is going to spend the meter she's never going to just sit there and just take it she's on pixel life she needs to kind of have something happen now and that was uh her opportunity uh you were just kind of good that she didn't cancel into that but for the next time they probably will and then because you press a button here that is even though you're pressing a button like off of recovery all of that ex stuff is she got iframes for days and she will bust out and she will kill and that'll kill your deadpool and if they're good enough they will go into a super and kill dante too so yeah. that's something to where we could have lost here but lucky enough we didn't but to keep that in mind just you see viper in this situation where she's on pixel or even like half health whatever the case if she's got pl more than one bar even even just one bar just always keep in mind that they probably will bust out at some point and that's what happened here mm -hmm. but lucky enough dante survives deadpool survives uh you probably called the assist with that yeah uh, you already used your last teleport in that last um interaction so you could have canceled into your teleport because you would have gotten blown up literally and because dante was already hit during this sequence you probably called like strider or something but during this entire time where Dante's there, we look at the... Remember there's a visual right, tells right. for, like, your assists? Mm -hmm. Only now is when they were available, even after the fact that you called uh, Deadpool or the uh, the quick work, right? So yeah. you got you got lucky with that one. They didn't realize it. Maybe they were anticipating the assists too, but you just got that's something that we have to, like, kind of learn to visually see for next time, like... Dante got hit. He's on recovery. I still don't have an assist. I gotta wait to see that assist to kind of be available to then go for it. Um, but here we got lucky. And now we're back into neutral. You know, we're back into that same old style. So let's see if we keep with that rhythm. Yeah. Calling your own jam session. He calls his. So that stops Dante. You actually cancel into you. That's a lot of cojones. Uh, going straight into the super, and it kind of worked out. Sometimes you could just do that. Uh, this is kind of smart because he's dashing down to try to like punish that. Like, ah, oh, he's not gonna spend the super. L look at look at his face. It's like, why did you do that? You that's your only option because you had the explosion. You could yeah. e even if they blocked it, you have another meter that you could DHC into Dante to make it safe. So yeah. in this situation, that's actually kind of smart. You kind of used it to like kind of bait them in, and then now that you got them in. Now you could just kill. You could just go straight into Devil Trigger or the other guns if you're fast enough. And then that could kill. In this particular case, you just went for the safe option. Just went straight into Super and then got him in. So that was actually kind of smart. That was pretty good. Yeah, I can't say I remember that I had the like, uh, teleport there. Now you the teleport, the yeah. Well, and I was like, oh yeah, this is kind of my only choice. And, th and then now we kind of just stall out. X-Factor 3 Dante is still a threat. Um... Just something that you kind of have to keep in mind. Dante, even in his uh, in this state, Dante has a very poor time with opening people up uh, if they're like on the back foot because of this situation. 
Dante can really only get hit confirms if you allow him to like box dash behind you, let teleports go in, go for S's. He doesn't really have great ways to like he has to take a lot of risks, especially in X Factor since he doesn't have any assists. Um so your best bet, I've kind of learned uh from other people teaching me Dante stuff and like what to do around it is up back. What do you really get as Dante if you up back, if you're on the defense, right? If he goes for it, the only thing he can really do to open you up is to go for a teleport cross-up or go for a throw, right? And what happens <laughs> off a Dante throw? What does he get? An X-Factor, he can kill, sure. But that takes a lot of X-Factor time. Dante takes a lot of time to kill somebody. Um, you could try to end it early with spending meter, but either way, you're better off with just kind of up backing and just going for reactions to you know not even really press that much you just kind of have to weigh out the x factor a lot and you're more often to get like more longevity out of it once dante's out of x so the longest way that you do that is just staying away utilizing your air movements you have two characters you actually have three characters that utilize air movements uh with your double jumps and your wall jumps so we utilize those we just up back get into the corner doesn't matter he's not going to go for lows because you're in the air and he has to go for a throw you know, that's one thing that you can really kind of take away from this, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Dante Last is is strong, but the way to open up is is extremely difficult. So He ain't Virgil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one other thing, I don't know if you knew this, but in X Factor, sometimes, I don't know why, but, um, well, not sometimes, all the time, like, they mess with hitboxes of certain, uh, certain moves in X Factor. So a big one for Dante in level 3, his Crouch M just doesn't have the same rage as non-X Factor. I don't know why. Know <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really ass, and I hate that so much. I forget about that sometimes. But like, if if you really want to see it, go into training mode. Try to do crouch M without X and in X, and you'll see like what happens to the range. And you and the developers thought like it was fair. <laughs> There's a few other moves in this game that does that uh, that does that too. Like it changes like the hitbox, uh, but I forget off the top of my head. I know that's a big one because that kind of annoyed me always. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so let's see where uh, you still have X Factor 2. Raw S. Let's go. Yeah. Yo, get back. All right, let's see. Oh, you almost got it. Yeah, you almost got it. it. I appreciate the effort, though. You almost had it. Either way, you pretty much won that. That was very good for the most part. You know, aside from those little hiccups here, like with uh, just the knowledge of what, like, Viper can do and, like, what to do in certain spots with, with your... Uh, quick work teleports overall that was a very good very good neutral base stance of how you played that match you didn't overstep or anything um you kind of just took it to the matchup and you played it really well so let's see if we can kind of ride that in with the next one did he show him i'm sorry did he show him like the the deadpool off of crossover assist how like how good it is like, that's another option he has as a defensive option Oh, uh, for quick work, like, uh... As cr cross counter, as a crossover. Yeah, right, right, yeah. I haven't shown him that yet. Um, yeah, I saw okay. that in, like, Wedge's Guide, though. How it yeah, comes in he, he, he pretty much, I'm like, he, he's got all of the Deadpool knowledge already right there with those okay. things, and he, he, he's learning as he goes with it, and the more I see him, like, oh, hell yeah. You know, he's definitely learning from the video, for sure. Okay, so yeah, so that's another defensive option you have, like, if, like, somebody's rushing you down, you know... It's pretty fast and like almost nine. I think it's almost. I think it's invincible actually when it comes. It, it to, is invincible. It's yeah. On recovery, it does have a little. Yeah. Recovery and then you have X, so like you can always make it safe. So and it's like you also have teleport. Yeah, that too. So you like you could just, if you want to just keep wasting time. That's another ideal way to do it. Yeah. Or if you want to go for a punish, that's something you should always consider too. All right. Looks like we're still keeping with that game plan though. Back into the neutral. Back into this. Um, are you thinking of anything like maybe like you? learn something within that matchup that you're not going to like incorporate here uh not particularly no i was just kind of like i'll just do what just worked again right exactly that's a great thing it's like it worked one time let's see if we can ride that out and especially with this team you can really just kind of stick to your one game plan and not really deviate too much with it there are a few like differences that you can make with subtleties that they have to kind of watch out for and that's what really makes this team a little bit scary but in, in essence, it never really changes game plan. So I think that's still uh, still a good thing to look, take out from. Uh, One thing I, I I don't like too much, like you're cornering yourself. Like, I don't like that. You want you don't want to give up too much space. Uh, yeah. Because, like, you're making it easier for him to, like, close the gap, especially since he has jam session. Like, that in the corner is, like, 
really good. So yeah. just keep that in mind about like, you know, how much space you're willing to give up. You know, maybe use your teleports to get out of the corner or like use your movement when they're dashing in to like, you know, if they're like over, like if, they, if they're like over you, you can go under them. Like in the, basically like me personally, like, right, right. You want to like keep like space to give yourself room to breathe, like to move around. Yeah, I know this. I do that a lot too. And yeah. Putting myself in the corner. Yeah, it's like easier with like characters like Magneto and like other stuff because you know you can plink around and do that. But like, um, like you know, just like that's when you're utilizing your ground movement or your like how beam is like your double jumps or your wall jumps. Like you know, take space in like different angles. Um, because you know you can call assist when you're up there if you double jump that wall yeah. jump. So like you can kind of call, you can call assist at like so, pseudo super jump hype. That's what I like to call it. And like it catches people off guard a lot, like um, because people don't like oh that people think you super jump and you really did it. So you know it's using like all those kind of different options to like you know, open people up and like you know keep yourself like, uh, not getting cornered. You're giving yourself room to play, <clears throat> basically. That's why like you're trying to keep yourself real estate to keep playing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like here, you say you're backing up, you're throwing gun, which is, this is fine, it's not even wrong, but like, you know, like you corner yourself, now you see your sis got stuff, so now you kind of have, you're kind of scrambling a little bit here. Yeah, and you do uh, ultimately get out of the corner, which is your best bet here. Um, you just kind of dash under and then kind of get hit anyway because of that. That hitbox is immensely good, like how Magneo kind of has the dash down, Nova has the dash down jab, she also has it too. And this hits behind. So, yeah, I'm, I'm as you down. notice, <laughs> yeah. that hit sphere is uh, very, very lenient and generous for her. She does kind of need this, though, so I'm not really complaining too much about it. But you, do, you did the right thing to get yourself out, and this probably would have led to uh, them building, like, another meter uh, and then killing. But in this particular instance, uh, you know, they do drop it. So, I uh, did get kind of lucky here. So, idea, putting yourself back into the corner again here. Now you're here, but... You're at least out for a little bit. You're stalling with uh, the nets. You're stalling with the grenades, which is a good thing. And again, that's the third time, unfortunately, like where it doesn't actually pay off. Where you're calling, like you're doing, you're not doing the wrong thing. They're just calling yeah. beam at the worst time. They're hitting buttons at the worst time. Where Strider's just getting ducked. In this case, yeah. quick work actually did come out. So, still not a bad option. I don't want you to try to deviate from that game plan, you know, but. No, if they were a little bit more aware of that, you know, they probably would have canceled it to Sizemore or something. They probably could have gotten the hit off of Quick Work on top of that too. So, but yeah, still, I'm still not trying to uh, like discredit that. It's still great options that you're throwing out, but that's 0 for three, you know. Yeah. Uh, yep. Hard now time again. Try. Yep. So, just like, like last before. game, they don't. They really. <laughs> that now we learn that this is the idea, right? I need Viper. I need to do everything I can do to make Viper stay because mm -hmm. that leads to so much with this team. And now we learn, right? We learn that this that overall is the threat of the team as a whole, right? It may not be so much of the threat for the person, but that's the idea. I need to keep Viper alive because that leads to so much more, you know? Yeah, uh, can you rewind a little bit, Bima? Yeah. Like right there, like that assist call, you got to be careful. Like when you play like stronger player like not against him but you know they will punish random strider calls like it's pretty yeah. easy to punish strider like that right there you could have did like he could have did super and like you know i don't know if guns beat dr doom uh super does it be man uh it can uh. be um it beats uh finger lasers but it doesn't beat spare flame of course yeah. no that exact situation happens in one of the latest sets yeah we yeah, like, only, uh... Doom by doing the Doom, uh, punch his strider by doing the Doom super and then just kills him off that. Yeah, you would always be caught, especially like um, characters that have like a super like Magneto who like can kind of cover that space that Strider's trying to come down on. You got to be really careful. Also, every character in the game has a button that just stuffs Strider. You got to keep keep that in mind. Yeah. So, you know, like, you know, protecting Strider, if you're going to call him out, you got to you gotta try to protect your assist. That goes for any assist, really not just Strider, but like especially Strider. Yeah. You know? You gotta, you gotta make sure you're covering your assists. Also here, like, you know, you, I know you're playing Deadpool, but look at your red life. Like, you know, you want to keep Deadpool alive. You got one of the best DACs in the game, guns into double trigger. Like, you know, keep your team alive. Because, like, I don't know if you are, um, this is the analogy coach always uses, like, with basketball. You know, you gotta cover your man. So obviously Deadpool covers Viper, 
Dante is going to cover Doom, and then Strider is supposed to cover the Anchor, because, you know, Anchor v. Anchor. That's, like, kind of the way I like to think of the game now. So, you know, his point is out. Your point is weak. Trying to bring in your second to, to try to deal with his second, if that makes sense. You know, no, yeah, that's you're, cover, you're covering, they're, they're covering each other. So, on paper, I don't know how Deadpool Viper goes, like, the matchup exactly. I want to say it's probably Viper favorite. Maybe 6-4. I would four. say it's 5-5. 5-5? Five, 6-4 five. Five, five. Six, six, with Viper with, uh, like, yeah. two bars, maybe. Okay. So, let's say both points die. Your team should be more favored because, like, Dante kind of – Dante just destroys Doom. And then Strider should beat Dante pretty handily, too. So, it's like, in in the in theory, you should have a better time versus this team versus, versus him. So, like, you know, ideally, you just want to win the point war, and then you're really favored. You get what I'm saying? Like, because your character is yeah. – in terms of matchup beat hits. So that's the way you want to think about it. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, coach gave, coach gave me that analogy and it made so much sense to me. I'm like, okay. So Tim uh, he trying here, to, yeah, tried to go. Oh, he was trying to do some salty sneaky. shit. I see yeah. that. <laughs> that's his name, right? Salty Sailor, trying to make you yeah. salty, right? Um, just kind of miss, messes it up a little bit, just lets the assist kind of fall behind him. But that is a kind of layered mix. But we did get out of that because of the, the mess up here. Raw S. Let's go. One thing I do like about, I don't like Dante Strider too much. But one thing you can do, if they're in the air like that, jam session into Strider call is like OD. I love doing that. Yeah. That's really good. The reason yeah, that also is very really good is because you do jam session, all those 10 hits link if they get hit. Because it's also a cross up if you think about it because he goes forward. Um, mm -hmm. You call the assist right before you do the jam session. They recover, and then Strider hits him back down to the ground, right? Then you get yeah. a full hit confirm from there. You do the Volcano Beehive. You do Super if you want to. You, that leads you up to a lot of uh, a lot of options there, for sure. Yeah, it's good against Flyers. Flyers are people who are super jumping. Like, it's, it's really good. Like, it just covers – it just does a lot. That's one of, like, the best things about this show, in my opinion. It looks like we kind of get away for a little bit, trying to – Trying to chip out the Doom as best as possible, but the recovery off of uh, Reaver. Yeah, Helmbreaker. Yeah, very good. Very good button. But, yeah, he, he could have gotten the kill here for sure if he had the uh, the right extension there. Had the right idea, just kind of fell flat there. And we take those little uh, unfortunate drops that they take, and we get the kill on Doom. So now, oh, unfortunately, <sighs> we hadn't had the hit. In, in, that, in this hit, if you had it right, let's think of it this way. Um... They're trying to keep you out with those seismos. You teleported right in, and you got the hit. Let's think of it this way, right? Yeah. You got the hit. She's at half health. If you actually finish, character's dead. Yeah. Right? Then we kind of have two people with five bars at the end, and you now have an, an incoming mix-up that will lead to X-Factor death. So in this way, you kind of already won with that hit, right? But we did drop it. But think of it this way. You got that character dead in that, you know, fantasy situation, and you got the right mix-up. Overall, like, now you're on the winning foot, right? That's your mm -hmm. game to lose at this point. You have five bars. You can go devil trigger into orbs if you want, lock them down. Even if they X-Factor, that's still a lot of mix-ups. Strider with jam session is still pretty good. You know, then your own Dante gets a little bit more life because they're in the back. So in that way, we think of the end game here. Once we get the Viper dead... Then it's about one touch, Dante's dead, we move on to the next, right? Yeah. So in that in that particular instance, let's let's say that you did get the kill there. You kinda already had one at that point. But we'll kind of pass that up as, you know, just an unfortunate situation. And now because of that, we're in this lifetime where we got the throw and they could have also killed you, right? So both guys unfortunately getting the uh kill hit. Uh, the kill hit here and dropping. All right, so there's one thing I want to take from my from from coach. Yeah, you got five bars, bro. You got double trigger, yeah. one of the best installs in the game. Like, use it. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, you know, it does a lot better, uh, more options, more movement, uh, air, better air movement, triple jump. You get your rental health back. Don't be afraid to spend your bar. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Dying with X Factor and meter is no point. You don't get those in the next round. You may use what you got in the in those moments. And in that case, you would have been able to, like, Psycho Crusher out. That's fully invincible, you know. You also have your uh, Thunderbolts as well. Um, so you have ways to, like, kind of 
force them to kind of come to you and also chip them out from a super jump position you know if they're underneath you go for guns if they're corner screen go for you know thunderbolt if they're trying to jump at you you have uh you have psycho crusher right so that does inherently give you more options to deal with in this case but yeah meter usage you may as well use the best thing that he has and you'll be able to build life on top of that too so but now we unfortunately lose Dante here. Trying to go for the unblockable, which does work, but uh, timing-wise was just a little off. And now we X-Factor, we get the grab. Right. What are we doing, right? We have five bars. What do we got? Yeah, party time. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> that was, that was yeah. good. That was definitely interesting, yeah. Is that, uh, are you going for that, like, legitimately? Is that, like, uh, your routing that you go for? Uh, yeah, I don't know the other one fully like yeah. when he starts on the ground mm -hmm. so i've kind of just been spamming like medium dash yeah and and that, that works that kills dante for sure yeah i definitely yeah, I got the job the other one with the excalibur loops yeah um we, we can it's only option there with like a yeah. raw level three that's the only thing like maybe to look out for but like beyond that like yeah that should have been like that's that's gg that's that's gg but, already right exactly like I said, like remember, like what we talked about earlier, like we're covering, you know, anchors covering anchor. Your anchor wins, like nine, like ten out of ten times. Well, probably seven out of three, you know, in a realistic sense. But yeah, it's hard. Like it's hard for Dante to fight Strider or Orbs. All right, so That's now this annoying. is disrespectful, right? You won, and he took your color. That's bullshit. That's oh, I didn't even realize that was the case. <laughs> he took your color. <laughs> now your team is all off synergized. Now your team doesn't work anymore. That's fucked up. But no, overall, no. He switches to his own Strider in the back with the uh, Virgil on point. Now this is... Now that he's like, oh shit, I'm going to lose. I don't want to lose this early. Now he's switching to like the, the, the thing that gets him dubs. And this is the like a game. really tough time for Deadpool to kind of deal with if you're not fully prepared for it. Now yeah. you kind of like shifted your focus. If he wins this set or uh, this, this particular match, he has to stick with that team. No matter what happens from here, because he's on his last, uh, he's on his last life. So that's something you have to th think in mind for tournament settings as well. If people have like a backup character, and they're like on the back foot, they may switch it last second or whatever. But if they win, they can't switch back. So now, no matter what happens, you have to think we're in a brand new set. Now he switched to uh, a brand new character. Now you kind of have to shift your entire mindset for the rest of the match. You know, you may go bring it down to two two, but now you have to kind of think, damn. That whole thing I was doing, I can't necessarily rely on those same things because they were working for Viper. Now I have to... You have some games to play with, for sure, but now you need to deal with this team. What can I yeah. do differently? Because now it's a completely different matchup. Am I even more familiar with playing this matchup? Now we kind of have to rethink the entire set. You do have only one game to win, but they also have ways to... Now that they've de like downloaded the way that you've been playing, if you don't have another team... Then they only have one type of like way to kind of go around it. Now they go with this, and if it works better, they only need three games. You know, it's not mm -hmm. really particularly the end of the world for them. It's more like a, a decision making thing that you have to do on the fly. So that's a very good thing that I think uh, Tim went for here. So let's see how you kind of deal with it. And from here, what is now that he switched, right? What's the idea? Are we still trying to go for the neutral thing? Are we. Uh, trying to bait out more of like now his strider calls because we learned about how to punish strider like where are you thinking here uh so my initial thought was oh fuck he threw yoed me two weeks ago with this team mm -hmm. okay. and then i was like differences this week though i already have a two game lead so yeah. let's take this first game because i was like oh i almost took one last week or mm -hmm. whatever the week it was ago so i was like let's not get over complicated and overwhelm myself and just kind of stick with the game plan i've had if it doesn't work i have time to change it later absolutely yeah that's a great way of thinking it. it's like and especially if you were on a 3l last time uh and you almost took one hey that almost took one you just need to incorporate that same type of game plan and put it right here right and like you said you only need one just simmer it down play the way that you have been and just feel it out you know you feel out the matchup right yeah and this also is still very good for you because the jump back medium guns, if you call at the right time, uh, unfortunately this did miss. This does punish uh, Doom Beam calls Doom if Beam, you're yeah. falling down with it at the right time, you know? Unfortunately, I think he was falling down with Virgil and then just kind of took all of those guns. 
But if he was like kind of up, like up backing a little bit more, those like guns that he hits below there, he probably yeah, would have ducked underneath good. Virgil and just stopped that assist. But yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, he gets the grab. Uh, now he's putting you into the corner here. And teleport back. No, he's just gonna go back to neutral and using his own strider. Yeah, that's something we gotta have to keep in mind for that. The reset was done. This that's why this team is like synergized so well. It's like even though like we may have had uh the switch up, you did double jump and put you into that situation with the strider, but this kind of locks down off of a reset here because strider is kind of putting you down from the air. And he dashes mm -hmm. right underneath you to get that crossover. So that was actually very good for Tim. And something to kind of keep in mind of for this team as well. Alright, so he goes for swords. And essentially now we lose Deadpool here. Yeah. Um, yeah, Virgil with both of these assists, getting the point character off. In my opinion, if you're facing like this team, I value um, the point war more. But you also don't really want Strider to kind of go off hand too and let him rock. So he's spending a lot of meter early. Like, he only has one bar. I think overall it's better for him to, like, kind of stay with the oppressive here and just kill every character no matter what and then just use your meter. But later on, if you do get the hit on Virgil and you kill and then he's only left with a bar, it's best for, for you at that point is to snap Strider in after that and then just X-Factor kill that character, right? Because mm -hmm. now that we got Virgil, the one that uses the meter to kill your characters out, after that... It's a matter of just making sure that your anchor has enough resources and you can just bring their anchor in. You know, it, it's a very complex type of shell and the team in general. But overall, like we lose uh, we lose the point war here, unfortunately. But now it's a matter of just kind of staying in to recover and, you know, making sure that he try to use as much resources as he can so he doesn't build enough bar. Devil Trigger for, uh, for Virgil is very good, but... He won't be able to build bar without TCing. So now it's like they don't have enough resources for later. Are they going to keep on spending it more for now? That's kind of your best bet. Utilize their like meter early on so you can just use yours to then, you know, have that as an answer at this point. Ah, yeah. Yep. See? And the X classic. Factor. Yeah. Kind of one of those things where it's like you're kind of already stuck in the air and now, yeah, they, they spent. All of their yeah, resources I gotta, here. I gotta teach Tim the more out. This a more optimal way to do that. Oh yeah. But yeah. now here's here's party time, right? Like he just spent everything to make sure that Dante's dead. Now they don't have X Factor throughout the entire match and zero bar. Now you have now four meters. Party time, right? Yeah. Now it's your turn. Block asshole. Uh 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 uh. Yeah. All intents and purposes. That character's dead as soon as you have orbs, you know. Now we kind of take... I love the fact that we're staying into neutral. They don't have... I love this. Yes. If they're in the air, we throw out that Vajra. They can't... You still can punish it for the most part in the air, but they have to be prepared for it. But yeah, they fly. Boom. Perfect. You know? Yeah. Yeah, we got to use the last bit of this X-Factor as best you can. Now this is where the tough battle really begins, right? But we're doing bird bombs. Now, this is still very good. Really good to utilize all of the cats and dogs. And that was neutral at its best. You used all of the X-Factor time. You built enough bar where you could kind of like do one touch off of the next hit and kill. Now, now we just need to kind of coast it, right? Just wait. You don't have to like press too much. You're on the back foot. Just utilize your better neutral options. And that hit confirmed into each other. That was perfect. That was great. I love that. And now this is completely even. You're gonna putting yeah, him into the even. corner, but you both literally have the exact same meter and the exact same health. Now it's just a matter of like kind of being patient, and that teleport leading into the Vajra just kind of led into him getting the hit confirm here. Not much we could really say about the Strider mirror. It's not really, uh, it's not really used that often. There's not many Strider mirrors like for here uh, especially. So yeah. kind of a rare instance where it's like you're kind of learning what to do here now. Uh, remember, remember what we said about before? If you just chicken block Vajra, what do we get? Uh, you can like grab. Yeah, or... absolutely. And yeah. and if you're fast enough with uh, with Strider, you off of any throw, you can hit confirm, right? You can go uh, dash up into satellite or pick it up, you know, 
and then you'll you at that point you would have built your right, bar, and then you would have been perfect. You know. Yeah. But unfortunately, he dropped it, and now you weren't you, like unfortunately you weren't fast enough to get the kill. But now they kind of jumped in the air, and then now it's party time, right? Yeah, because uh, it's not really uh, too uh, good. Yeah. That was really good. You you really played this as best as it could. Uh, with the resources and the knowledge that you have now. There's not really much that we could say to uh, kind of fix it, you know, without just fixing stuff in general. But you played this as good as it gets, you know. Like, the, they unfortunately made a little bit more mistakes with, uh, especially right here, right? This, I feel like, is the determining mm -hmm. factor. They blocked. Now, you're both into the exact same situation. You both have the exact same meter. You both have the exact same health. They also should have went for, vo uh, for orbs immediately. Now you're both in this situation, and it's literally just a matter of whoever gets the hit next, right? Yeah. But they unfortunately weren't really seeing that, and you took advantage of it because immediately as soon as that happened, you did it, and they jumped. And why that's bad? Because now they are forced to block, and they now have to take all of this orb time to then get their level 3 off. But can they block in time? They can't. So you took advantage of that. That was really well played. That was very, very, very good. Thank you. Uh, one thing I will say about like the Virgil matchup, um, with that team in particular, like um, the way I like playing against that team, um, it's like kind of like Virgil's kind of like always playing for his next bar. He's kind of like Morgan S in that kind of way, because that's mm -hmm. like his, like one of his best tools to like try to put swords and lock you down. So you know the team is gonna try to like lock you down, force left right mixes or throws, you know, you know do things like that and then chip you to death. That's his like alternate. Um, win con if you want to call it like that. So you gonna you won't always want to think about ways. How can I waste his swords? Because when Virgil don't have bar, he he has to play a little bit more honest. And the Deadpool has like the right tools to try to like blow him up, like the grenade, pretty good, and the jetpack guns. So, um, and also like uh, one thing I like is like um with Deadpool, he has a four frame jab, and mm -hmm. Virgil only has a five frame jab. And most Virgils don't hold light in the beginning. So you kind of like bullied them at 99, you know, really pressed them because like all they're really going to maybe try to do is like try to throw you or like jump up helm breaker or something like that. So you want to keep that in mind. You know, you have better yeah. buttons at 99, ideally, and um, you don't want to give Virgil too much space to work with, if you get what I'm saying. You kind of want to just no, press him. Yeah. You want to keep him kind of blocking and then, you know, get a mix and then like take care of him really quick. Yeah, I've definitely because Virgil is learned. Virgil is the heart of a, heart of that team, but you know he still has Strider, which is fine. So it's kind of like the idea, you know, you're Deadpool, you gotta win the point war, nap out Doom, keep Doom last, kill Strider, and then your team just kind of like wrecks Doom. That's the same idea. Mm -hmm. That's the last time you know you want to think of matchups like, you know, if you if both points die, so it's Dante Strider versus Doom Strider. I like your team more because Dante has a better time versus versus doom then you know it's just anchor versus anchor or don or strider dante versus just strider which is better yeah so you want to think of it like that <clears throat> um, yeah i definitely the, realized uh, set, right with grass yeah okay yep. yeah so uh what's your uh obviously this is a uh tough road to climb up from but uh, locomotives yeah locomotive mm -hmm. the locomotives master right um yeah no nova helmet this week so he's not powered up um, so you already have a, a little better of a better advantage because he doesn't have the Nova helmet on, but, uh, on yeah, the for real, what's, uh, what do you think about this matchup? What do you think about this? Uh, well, I know he can't use the team hyper combo as much when I have three bars with Deadpool. So I wanted to be on the lookout with that, with the counter. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just kind of still play keep away again. You actually have that for all three because yeah. Deadpool has a level three, Dante has a level three. And Strider has Ragnarok. Strider. All yeah. those have uh, iframes that they are forced to spend X Factor for. Sometimes wasting your X Factor, or uh, I'm sorry, wasting their X Factor is more beneficial overall. That yeah, X Factor you have to always think of it. Bar is a renewable resource. You will always build bar back even while you're getting hit. X Factor is one time. If you force X Factor on them. That means that even though you may, like, are down a character, you may be down on resources with meter, I'd rather bait them to force spend an X-Factor 
than for you to like kind of just let them just do whatever they want. Because most likely, if they're if he's going for that team super, I'm I'm assuming you mean like with the bionic arm and the doom, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, most likely, if they're gonna spend that just to kind of get things started, um, they're kind of gonna spend like everything to kill that character. You know, like it. It's a little bit of an awkward hit. It's an inherent mix up after if you block it, but overall, you're gonna try to spend the resources anyway to kill. So if you, if you could spend it like and force them to just do it early enough, you know, and you you know waste your bar that's fine you could still like at least better yourself with an incoming mix-up because you have x-factor to react to you know you can x-factor throw if they try to go in for zip or something or you could just kind of mm-hmm. just see where you're falling down from with x-factor so x-factor is a much better uh resource to like kind of throw them off for it you know and you're already better off for it now that you have them spend it you know mm-hmm. so uh one thing i wanted to add that to what beatman said like this team doesn't have, like, when you're looking at this team, you gotta always remember, this team doesn't really have a real, like, quote-unquote anchor. So, like, X-Factor is always kind of live for them, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah. Like, don't so. be surprised that they use it, you know, not just off of the team super, like, they use it to, like, I don't know, like, guard cancel something to punish you, because this team really strives on momentum. It's, like, it's kind of like Team KBR in that sense. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, a TJ play or something, like, so X early to kill just to gain the momentum to like mix you to death and die. It's mm-hmm. kind of like that because they don't really need X like that comeback factor or X because this team does a lot of damage and just kills almost yeah. off any hit. So just think about like you know X is always live. Like always keep that in the back of your mind. Like oh he X like he might X in this situation or or he might not. You know things like that. Yeah. But I but I think man you said this matchup is kind of it's kind of weird right? Nova into Deadpool because he can like jump over the grenade. Um, I, some people say that uh, it's favored for Deadpool. I think it's more favored for Nova because one touch and Deadpool's dead. Um, you can't really get away from a Nova long enough for you to like stall out and kill without spending your own resources. So, especially also like I think that your matchup for this is a little bit better because they're now not really forced to be in the air so much because you have Strider. So. It's kind of a little more teetered for Deadpool at the 99, you know? If you can get away, you can kind of force that. But overall, I think that Nova is a much better way of kind of getting in with Box Dash uh, H. You could try to bolo that if you want, but they still also can use that first bar. Just like Viper, at any point, they could just Thunder Knuckle. You could just Human Rocket Punch, you know, Super, and then cross over and get the X-Factor, get the kill, right? Because yeah. as uh, Neo said, it's momentum-based. So you kind of have to wait for your turn and it's kind of hard to wait for your turn on a team like this you know it's it's just kind of one of those where like you have to you have to find the, the hit on nova and then it's a much easier process you know but mm-hmm. let's see how you kind of handle it in my opinion staying your game plan of the neutral yeah look at that okay so this is the the opposite of how that round start worked in the last set right yeah. weirdly enough he kind of goes he holds forward i'm not really sure why um i can maybe ask him this later but you don't really need to as Nova. He kind of jumped to maybe like get the instant overhead or something like that. Maybe just wanted to test the waters on round, on 99. But that's that's why you don't hold forward with Nova. His his jab is four frames, I think. And yours beats five. that shit. It's, it's five. Is five. Yeah. And and I think uh, uh, Deadpool's beats that shit. So, yeah, Deadpool, Deadpool's four. Yeah. That just... Already, like, I'm not sure why he went for that 99 to start. And if you utilize this better... Um, you would have been in a much better situation with like getting that confirmed, but I think that's the same. Yeah, the same thing happened there be more with that jam session. That's something we gotta learn uh, and then get better at, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, nothing to say here. Here we go. Party time. Yep. And he's going. Yep. I I believe this for every uh for every team with the Deadpool on it. Getting the anchor out first is priority number one, and you actually got the block here. Um, I've kind of noticed that it's been more same side with like his positioning, but it's still a little more, um, it's, it's still a little untelegraphed if you just don't see it. If you kind of like held yeah. forward a little bit, I think that would have crossed over, but good thing you had the block there to kind of visualize that, but still unfortunately had to, had to get hit here and he does drop it and there you go. Yeah. You can't really leave Strider in too much, but you can't really safely DHD too much. You know, mm-hmm. Legion sucks, so you kind of have to like kind of go for like a hard tag, but that's also a risk. So, yeah, I think overall you're fine with going for the defense here. You know, 
we kind of go back like it's just better to try to be like to learn how to block in this early yeah. stages you know i don't really think it's a bad situation now but for tournament wins it's like it's kind of tough to really get past it you know mm-hmm. yeah so this, this is one of those things like where i think like winning the point war is really ideal for you like if you can kill nova without using x and then you touch spencer it's worth xing spencer because then doom is less yeah on team. so your team like as like as we said doom gets wrecked by this team so ideally you just want to kill in order um and like like leave doom for last so like you, you winning the point war is like ideal because dante into like into this team is like it's kind of a little rough it's hard because dante no was not too bad but spencer kind of like kind of hard for dante with spencer because he has really good buttons up close and like you know if, if you got good movement he can close the gap really easily because he has like really good forward playing so it's like you never want it to come down like that um so it's like things you want to think about you want to try to win like you try to like ideally want to think all right i gotta win the point if deadpool is like you know low try to get him out and um things like that and also you know you, you want to always keep in mind like b-man said you can't just throw out grenades or guns because he does have his own quote-unquote bust out to try to punish and kill you and then x and then try to like just win off like that yeah so, you know you gotta you want to like pay attention to what you're like really doing in this matchup once he don't have bar you know it's free range you can play how you want to play it mm-hmm. and i think uh the same thing happens here yeah it's an overhead yep. yeah he goes for that a lot um it's not that bad to like kind of uh go for the up back in that situation but he does also have crouching m which is one of the, like the better buttons that nova has because of distance and how much it covers like hitting low um he kind of goes for this more like in the corner for the instant overhead just to try to cap you there. Um, you do kind of get away. He does kind of mess this up. But let, let remember, in that fantasy reality we did in the last match, Dante's He's, dead because he hit it yeah. perfectly. But now you at least got out of it. So now what can we do to like kind of get out of that, right? Yeah. Um, he had a pretty good hit there. Yeah, a little straight like, hit there. Okay. That, that was good. Uh, the straight hit here with the MH into Stinger. Um the falling downness of that, though, like the, getting the stinger to convert from that height, you know, it, that's a little hard. So in in a lot of situations from that, you could just go MH and then launch and then just kind of okay. reset that position because now you're at four bars and that would kill Nova with just one meter. Maybe double trigger if you needed it, but overall that would have led into uh, – that would have steamrolled into Spencer coming in and you could get Deadpool in with a safe DHC. And then that mm-hmm. at least would have probably gotten a little more even at this point. But he got out, mass jab, very good against Dante, uh, mess up the incoming there. But now this is basically kind of unwinnable. You kind of have to get lucky like three times and getting the hit with Deadpool just like Dante is pretty tough. Yeah. That is really difficult to do, especially with a movement so good as this team does. You just have, And he has two rocket punches. He could do it at any point. He spent one there. And now... Here's level three. Fuck yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> like, whatever, right? Like, he'll take yeah. this all day. Your act tractor's gone. So, you know, in this situ- in this situation, you kind of have to get lucky four times. And that was on I- that, that's just not reasonable to think about. It's... Yeah. We have to think about the next match, right? You know? hmm But, yeah, you get the hit here. Do we get the full hit here? Yeah, get the launch. And, yeah, follow my lead. Here we go. Yeah, I crossed under, so yeah, you take a little bit of hits here. He still has X, so dash it. He's getting, he's gotten much better at this off of like just plinking to get to the other side, and th- this is definitely one of his stronger suits that he's gotten a lot better at. That movement mm-hmm. has increased a lot for him, so yeah, something we kind of have to like learn to like get past that. But yeah, th- this is basically dead. There's nothing. Almost got the kill on Spencer, but yeah, that's still incoming with Doom. Not much yeah, you can really do there. Yeah, get tripped out at that point. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how we uh, kind of take it. Yeah, Nova throw. We we love it. This is why I hate it. This is, I, this is why I think that it's so much more favored for Nova. You just get things started with any throw. And if he could catch up to you, it, it's tough. He gets the full confirm. And yeah, what one throw leads to your point character being dead. And that yeah. this is why 
I think it's better because you at least have to spend some resources to kill his no uh, to kill his Nova off of a throw or whatever. You know, you have to kind of spend a lot. Good, uh, good evasiveness to get out of the corner there. Um, I don't know if you really wanted Stinger to get out from there, but fuck it, we ball. You got out, and that's already a plus. Mm -hmm. Falling down S, though, yeah. I'm... Yeah, no, I was just playing casuals, had too much success with that, and then it was just stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, he spent X. Okay, yeah, that's... uh. Now here, this is something that like oh wow he he kind of he kind of fumbled the bag a little bit like he could have gotten to he got X before that he could have just went into super immediately and then X or something he could have done mm -hmm. a lot more with that but now in this in this realm of reality we get out we spend we spend because we now have three meters our goal yeah. now is to wait that X factor out and to basically like take the dub you know like that now we need to kind of spend our spend our resources to get that momentum and right there, that would have been a good x factor punt it does that like yeah i would have x factor just to try to gain momentum because you need momentum because doom's coming in next and then that would have been ideal for your team yeah that makes a lot of sense i i definitely hold on to x factor to level three mm -hmm. way too often never yeah like you know, wait, yeah it's not a bad idea I, I it's never a bad idea if you have virgin in the back that's 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 the only time where like Phoenix, like you know, that's probably the only two characters. But like any other time, like especially if they burn X first, your X is always on the table. Think mm -hmm. of it like that. Like you know, they burn X. Like you know, they have look. He has he lost X. He used X. I mean, he has no bar. You have X, two characters, and four bars. Like you can run to this team really easily with all those resources. Because now he has to hold, he has to hold, like, you know, your mixes and stuff. And what do we say about Dante level three before? Like, this this character is tough to get the head off. You know, you kind of have to... Yeah. It's a lot of Hail Mary type of situations with this character. And, yeah, just unfortunate that we didn't really uh, get anything off of that. Um, he didn't go into the other meter, which is weird. Um, couple fumbles from him. Nice adjustment to get the... Uh, th this is something that, like, not a lot of Dante's realized, but... Because of like the sometimes the awkward positioning with his hit spheres, like that will force him to go behind. But you adjusted that really well. You recognized that you were on the other side, and not only did you recognize it, you converted it perfectly to go into uh to beehive or whatever the fuck. The raw launch. So yeah, that was a that was a very good note to point out. Like you you've recognized that, and that's something that uh is something to learn for Dante, like in positioning in situations like that. Good defense there. Okay. Yeah, he's going for a lot of lows. A lot of lows. And yeah, don't be scared of double trigger. Like, one of Dante's, yeah. if you, if you want to come back with Dante, that's one of his, like, win cons. Like, you have to DT. Like, it gives him more damage, more options. Like, gives you more more stuff, more things you can do. Health back. Like, you kind of need that. You know? Yeah, health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get your health back. That's another important thing. Especially, like, you know, it's 30 seconds left. It could have come down. It's happened before. You know, you're in DT, and, like, you're getting your health back, and then, like, you win. Because they can't get their health back because they don't have an install that does that. You know, it, it does come up. Like, it comes up more yeah. than you think. And these, like, really clutch situations. You know. Yeah, grass a little bit too, uh, a little bit too solid there. He did have a few fumbles there, which, you know, definitely could have been taken advantage of for sure. But this this is seeming like nice. a, I like a that. very steamrolling type of situation here. Oh, nice, nice challenge with that. I like that. Yeah um so let's kind of go back here and round start putting yourself into the corner unfortunately again and that's another spot where nova will capitalize very well is that positioning because he has layered mix to go for lows highs uh forward throws all that stuff uh but you kind of push him out um don't think you really meant for that but hey crouching m a very good anti-air because it stumbles them a little bit and then you kind of fall down and you did the right thing here you stumbled them to like where they're like, oh, snap. Uh, I need to kind of come down with something. Yeah. Let's see. You do crouching in here. You dashed under and went for the jab. But because it was jabbed after your dash and not after you recovered from the dash, you went to the other side. And then he punished. So not the wrong idea there. You probably would have opened him up there, honestly. But the, the placing of the jab there was a little bit too early. And... Uh, yeah, it just he just kind of jabbed at the other side and got the conversion. But that that was a very uh, good recognition to dash underneath that and then just cross him up. 
Yeah, I feel like he probably would have had gotten open up there, honestly. But hey, sleeper combo. Here we go. We've seen this out times, right? Favorite you know? combo. But he actually does drop it here. Almost All got right. that ball though. Yeah. Just need to uh wow. He okay, so here we go again. This is the second time in a row. Um unfortunate bolo there. But that was that was the right idea, you know, like getting the H after that bolo. I think it just needed mm -hmm. to time uh the bolo a little bit better, and then you would have gotten the conversion, but that's okay because you teleported and he didn't realize during this super that you called the assist. And yeah, if he was a little bit better recogn recognizing that in this fantasy situation, that is unfortunately like checkmate here. You would have lost both characters if he was fast enough. But he did it too late, didn't realize it. Now, just like the last game, we need to, now that he spent his resource, now we need to realize that now X Factor's off the table. You have yours. You're in a much better situation, even though you were taking a lot of hits there, and you basically have almost a non-character here, you know? Yeah. So I will, you should get Dan the Dante in. If two bars, Deadpool get Deadpool some real health back, and then it's Dante into Doom. Like, ideal. Like, their best matchup on this team. Dante's best matchup on this team. Yeah, I definitely have to think of it like that basketball analogy. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he, he he's not an anchor, but, you know, you want to play for matchups. No, like, yeah. you know, you want to play for matchups. You know, you get Deadpool some red life back, get Dante in, you know, DT. He has DT plus Strider, and you have X. So, you know, if you really want to, you can kill Doom or just lame him out. Force him to bring something else in. Like, maybe he'll bring in Nova. Maybe you get the hit on Nova. That's an X-Factor situation, and now you're just running through the team. Because yeah. now you don't have, you know, that's the thing. You, you, so he has to like risk more and you can always be like, I'm safe. So I have X. That's kind of the way you want to think about it. Cause you can okay. always like you know, X to like protect yourself or just punish something or whatever. But to also note here, like, even though we like are playing the matchup, right? Like this is literally just one touch, like you said, and this will eventually lead to like now him crossing over and yeah, mm -hmm. you thought it was yeah. going to be same side cause you're holding back at that point. And now he hard tags Nova. Yeah, now even with two bars, or I'm sorry, two uh two characters in X Factor with now four bars, this is like momentum now on his side. He killed the character. He may have spent the resource. He's gonna go for the snap one more time. Let's see. And you don't block yep. it this time. Yeah. So this is where like that the, the, those little decision making decisions will kind of impact the entire match. You know. Yeah. And. Yeah, and now he will make sure that Dante's last for this team because Dante lasts for this. It's like, it's more tough than having to deal with the Strider. He never wants to deal with Strider. He's played Tim long enough to, to get hoed by that character. Oh. So. Damn, we could have did launch there. Yeah, hit Spears. Let's go. That was looking like you could actually have crossed him up a little bit, but. Oh. Yeah, yeah this is just. DT. Kind of... Yeah. You got a yeah, DT. Yeah. Either for DT reason. has happened what? I haven't once, seen maybe? it yet. I, I'm honestly not sure. I think it's happened DT like was. once in the first set, but yeah, not nearly enough. Yeah. yeah, five bars without any like real movement with Dante now. It's like, yeah, we. this is something that we learn as now that we're getting this reflectiveness, you know, like we yeah. lost this, but what do we take from it, right? You had two very good opportunities to have that happen, right? You. There was a couple mistakes that Grass does make mistakes here and there, but it's those little things where it's like you recognize that he X Factor early and you just have those opportunities. It's just tweak it up a little bit, and those matches definitely could have gone a different way. You know, it's not impossible, mm -hmm. right? Like, do you think that fighting Grass is like impossible, like to beat him or anything? No, no I could have like, went three two either way. Up. Honestly, if if you would have just played it like like slightly uh, slightly differently, I could have went three two either way. Yeah. Very honest. At the very least, I think it would have been close to like three one, you know, maybe like getting yeah. close to last character like here and there. But we're we're learning these little like things to work on. To it's not really so much to better the pair uh, the the player itself, like to go against Grass himself, but it's no, just little things that general. we're learning about your gameplay, right? We're, yeah, we're showing you what they can do, but here's what you can do in reaction to that. Here's what this team is really like very strong with, like. You didn't do this here. Let's try to work on that next time, right? So it's something to, like, kind of revisit and watch this every now and again to, like, what was that What that he said? You know, what, what was it that I can do here? You know, 
this is why I feel like it's really good to kind of go over it, you know? And I really feel like you could have had that. You could have had something there for sure. And you yeah, gave, the, basically like, gave you two of those know. games, right? That, yeah. In that situation, he may not have given it to you the first game, but if you got those two games, it would have been 2-1 in your favor, right? Now mm-hmm. he's the one that's going to have to, like, press it up and do maybe, like, open more opportunity to make more mistakes. You know, we never know, right? But yeah, we have to take those, and now we... We, we got to take those opportunities, right? Yeah. So the next one was at a 51.50, I think. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. This, this is, set pisses uh, me off a bit. Cause this I've, is never seen, I've never seen I've this guy play. I saw, I saw the record. I was like, who is this? Yeah, so apparently from what Grass said, this is like back when uh, the other, the arena was open. And I wasn't around that long while playing back then. But that was when mm. like Moons was playing. You know, apparently he was around back then. Um, yo, yo, moons. That was a guy. I fucking someday, someday we'll get him out. I will believe that. I, w- uh, I love watching moons play. His movement clean, like it was od. Yeah, so I don't really have much. Uh, oh, this matchup wrong. is terrible for for his team against for his yours. Team, like, yeah, um, yeah. I feel like Deadpool bodies is do- the dorm and well, yeah. not too, obviously, but uh, uh, Wesker right. is pretty interesting. I think Strider beats Wesker. Here's here's something Don't... that I just noticed um, right here. He's coming down with fish hook. What happened? That I didn't punish him. No, you did everything no. right. What happened was fish hook has projectile nullification property, and if you notice, uh, it came out and jam session's still there. Okay. Nothing's happening. So that's one of those little things where. Dorm just kind of has a little bit of priority to like stop a projectile like a beam like jam session going up at him, and he didn't recognize that, and that's unfortunate that that can happen. But that's a little showcase here that he does have an answer, but it's still a bad situation for him because so you never really expect jam session to not hit right, but now he was down backing to nothing. He tried to mm-hmm. s now a little bit too late. Now you're out of there, right? Yeah. Just something that's like kind of Dormammu specific that he could just kind of stop some projectiles like that. Okay. Um, neutral here. Uh, so in this spot, I think once again, you're going for is the quick work into um, uh, into the Strider call. I, it yeah. looks like that. It actually I might be the teleport, teleport, actually. Yeah. Let me slow it down a bit. Let me just see. It looks like Deadpool grabbed his hips. Yeah, so you recover. Yeah, so that's down. Yeah, he was uh, going for back teleport. down. Yeah, so I think you're going for teleport in that situation. I was gonna say teleporting in that situation is better because of the speed in which that you can get out of this spot. And now Deadpool can't really do shit. He has to wait to fall down forward and stuff. So, yeah, uh, this is just one of those like little unfortunate situations that if you were a little bit faster with like getting the input of teleport out from this spot right here if you were on the recovery you would have been right in front of him and then you would have converted but a little bit too late and now both deadpool and strider are Probably. on less than 20 percent and now he can kind of steamroll get the snap in on dante yeah just a little bit uh you had the right call there for sure but just needed to be a little bit faster and it could have changed the, the outcome oh sure. nice nice coming down with light i like that yeah, uh, this is hey. something we gotta learn, right? And then, you know, Strider, yeah. dies Strider on that is too. now on thirty percent life. He is gaining life back fast, but not fast enough where he literally could just spend a bar and, and beat out a him. super and get the assist. You know, like now, th- this is something we need to learn, like in general, right? There's never really a, a there's never really a good time to call an assist uh, while they're like about to die. There's never. Mm-hmm. It's just best to like just kind of play out the neutral a little bit more because your character can do it. Devil trigger, you know, like how we said before, airplay, beam. You have the better options to get out and stall some more. You have pl- remember the time is on your side too. Like even though he's winning, you can stall out enough to where like you can get both of your characters to like get their health back and a much more longevity of the time. You know, like you you have so much of it. You may as well just play to the clock. You know. Yeah. Not many people do that. People just go 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 but like the time is also a health bar you know like you, that's always dwindling down for both of you you may as well utilize every second that you have you know it's like an alternate win con think yeah. of it like like if you play card game that's the way i like to think about it no alternate yeah. win conditions that makes a lot of sense 
And yeah, teleport. That should yep. be curtains. Fucking Tony Killer OTG assist. You know, like sure. <laughs> Tony Killer OTG. Hey, he really didn't need it, but fuck it. I'm right? dead. People... I'm dead. So, yeah, Tony Killer again. Just you had that. That that really was fine. You could have had that teleport Deadpool. You would have had three characters. You know, like you you could have stopped Dormammu early enough, and then Doom's coming in. We know the Doom matchup already, and Wesker's the only little oddball there because X Factor actually with Wesker is pretty good against the team in some ways. But you know, like that, that could have been your game too. You know, there's nothing really wrong. Just we need to kind of fix those up a little bit. You know. Yeah, that's the story of this set, unfortunately. But that's okay. playing this we fine. recognize these, right? We learn from these mistakes, and this is why this is happening, right? Yeah. Uh, Gray hey, look, he's cornering himself. Good, you know, for Dormammu, locks him down some more. Oh, almost you tried. Like yeah, almost. Damn. Yo, Tony Keller, let's go. Yeah, not, now he needs it, but decided to go for Stalky Flare after. And look at that. Nice! Yes! Oh, oh yo, uh, okay, I want to highlight this real quick. Okay. That's good recognition. Okay, so you're in the air. If he did it earlier, uh, during the pillar, you wouldn't have had this opportunity. You might have been able to, on recovery, call Strider and then have that assist hit him. Because remember, Stalking Flare stalks you. It doesn't stalk the assist, right? Mm -hmm. So if he did it a little bit earlier, right? Let's let's go in the situation where it's more beneficial for him. And this is why another reason why I like Hawkeye a bit better. So during this, right? Now you're at this stage. You're high up in the air. Stalking Flare is now on the screen, right? In this particular spot, now you mm -hmm. kind of have to think you recovered. During that super, you would have been able to recover, and guess what's available? Strider Assist. It will come up towards you. It will not go where Strider will come down from this angle and him in the head. The only way how he would be able to be safe is if he DHC'd. Would he have DHC'd? I don't know this guy. Probably not. He probably would not have recognized that that assist would come out. But remember, Stalking yeah. Flare will go away. Doesn't matter if you hit him or if the assist hits him. This is why I really like having the recovery for Deadpool because you could double jump and then make sure the Stalking Flare goes even higher and then call the assist or just have it come down. Either way, on recovery of this, Stalking Flare's on the screen, mm. Strider will come out and then hit him. But in this situation, you recognize that. You teleport to the other side, slid. That was, that was great. I love it. I love that. Now that's gone. And yeah, uh, I think what happened here is that it went to the other side and you tried to follow where he would have been. Yeah. Let's see, what exactly happened? So, you, yeah, that's what it was. Okay, so you dashed to the other side. That's what happened. So you get the bolo here. You dash back under him to the original side. And then he fell forward and you went backward. If you just launched from that spot you would have been holding up forward in the right direction and then converted so that's just one of those uh one of those things where it's just like kind of just let the quick work rock and then just launch you're usually fine after that yeah uh the hit confirm was much better here uh to get the jam session i think this is the first time that we really get the conversion off of that yeah I think you just go a little bit too uh, too extra with the buttons here. Uh, your best yeah. bet after that, I think. Good snap, too, by the way. I like the idea you're snapping here to get rid of the door, and that is the center of the team. So good recognition of that. Uh, launch, just honestly, just wait. You kind of have to just wait your buttons a little bit more because you're going to whiff M like that, you know, and they're too high. So just kind of mm -hmm. delay it a bit and then just go H into S because H is like one of those buttons that the knee comes up so that hit sphere kind of goes above a little bit, like to his chest and like a little bit above him. And then that will give you enough time to then convert that with an S after that. So gotcha. usually like just launch, just go straight from H to S in those little finicky spots. And then I miscounted the teleports. But hey, we take those. Look at him. He even shook his head. He wasn't even sure about what happened either. But... Now you're in the corner. We learned this matchup from all three matchups before. Everyone plays Doom, and this is why I hate Doom. Good recognition from him to call out for the uh, for the super. He could have like launched into the super, but going straight into Spear Flame, that's gonna punish Strider, and he's he knows how to punish it. So yeah. he do, he is a little bit seasoned. So there we go. Now we know right to not really go for that because he knows how to punish it. You know, at least raw. You know, 
like maybe cover it with like gun some more you know uh mm-hmm. grenade you know like force to have him think that he has to block or something yeah like helmbreaker that, you know? Yeah, uh, I think that's the second time you try to get the conversion from that. Uh, one thing, yeah, don't really just go straight for raw teleport. Again, five bars. Yeah. We, it's the same conversation we've had before, you know, just utilize the time. Don't know what he's doing there with the drop, but now he has to force X. Uh, make sure you recovered in time. Doom problems. Yeah, foot dive. Yeah, well. All right, a little bit of a uh, little jankiness here. Um, yeah. Wesker kind of has a little bit more easier time. Uh, jam session into Devil Trigger would have been fine, but he can X Factor go for Command Throw. And it's it's yeah. kind of tough to again more Hail Marys from your side, you know. Still the same thing that we kind of have to learn to get a little bit better at. But again, that that's two in a, that there's a, there's been like what five now, like maybe five matches, or now I guess with this would be four where things were kind of given to you in in some ways and. It's just those like little things we could tweak to like now ride the momentum. Like they, they're, hey, they're giving you the character. You take those, right? You know. And yeah. We just have to kind of recognize a little bit more. You know, you're not necessarily doing anything wrong. You know, like, there's nothing that's like, oh, we really should never go for this. We really never should. Do-. There's nothing that I can really say about that in this in this analysis here. It's just fine tweaking it some more. You know, it's just yeah learning what you got and utilizing it a bit better. That's all. Uh, one thing I would say, like, when you play Dante into Doom, you know, then the air, you have so many options. Acid Rain, Melee mm-hmm. Carrots, Twister, um, everything that can be canceled into DT. Like, you know, like, another uh, win comp for you, for Dante, like, you are you have X, you know, and you have, and you're a double trigger. That's why, I, like, it's really good because you have the Thunderbolts, and you can't push block that. You have to hold that, and it does insane amounts of chip. And, Which and one is X the Factor. The, like, the little purple bean that comes out of his hands. Um, the lightning that yeah. does yeah, yeah it does yeah. so much chip and x factor like is really is really strong you can force people to x early like it's kind of like you know ideal situation force them to x early because they don't want to die of chip so you know and so like you you know he's always want to like Dante, the way you want to play dante like he has a tool for every situation like he's a jack of all trades character master of none but he always have a like he always has the right tool for the right situation so you know, yeah it's just like recognizing should I, I can use this or this, or I can do this. Like, you know. Yeah, like with the teleport on Doom. I yeah. realized as soon as I did that, I was like, I should did, probably just... It wasn't like, bad. Was... You did it a little slow. Like, if they do yeah. finger raises, te- that's a free punish for teleport. Re- really easy. You just recognize that you got to do it, like, a little bit. Like, you know, you got to do it faster because that's a free punish. You, you know, you teleport when they do that, do M into airplay, into killer brief, uh, full confirm. And then Doom dies. Now it's just Wesker versus Dante, where I think it's probably maybe 5-5, five, five, maybe slightly Wesker it's favor. Five, five, but with, with both yeah. of them being an X. Like it, it's yeah. just literally whoever gets the hit. But yeah, but I think Dante Dante can kind of lame out Wesker, especially in DT. Like, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But like, you know, things you want to think about that. Like, honestly, your team on paper just beats his like completely. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of mad about this set in particular because I really felt like it could have gone three zero. But don't don't really think of it too mad either. Like he he did have no, the right no. situation for calling yeah, out he the was spirit playing, plane and punishing. Like, he he yeah. is like at least seasoned enough to like kind of go for that. So now we we shift that focus, right? It's not so yeah. much of something that you need to do a little bit better. It's like now we just now you tested it out now against this particular guy. Can you call those Strider like how we talked about before? No, you can't because one yeah, exactly. situation. That happened. He was dead, right? So, yeah. All right. Uh, also, um, the point or Mamu is uh, not really utilized that much. Raw S. Yeah. Fucking hate this button. I hate that. I hate that one. I hate so it much. too. Yeah. Very active. Um, he also is using the fact that he has um, the OTG to allow him to get spells. So I think that's why he has this. Um, ooh. Oh, nice okay. Arm. Finally. Oh, you almost oh, had man. it. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit faster, and you would have uh, would have got party started a little bit. Didn't recognize that he had the meteors in. Nice box. Nice. Uh, 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 uh. No, get back. Oh, oh. Yeah. He did it. He did it too early. He had to wait a little bit. Uh, uh. Oh, TC. Why he's getting greedy? Okay. Yeah, that was that was really greedy. Now, this is something that I'm like learning too. Can he actually do this? We'll find out. Does he? Uh, it won't it even, doesn't even matter. It won't even matter, right? Okay, that was good. That, uh, that, that was, was good. good. He staggered his way. Yeah. Yeah. 
one of those things where it's like not every character has that too well and dorms isn't that good but he did it anyway and it just kind of worked out uh, 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 uh. and level right three. into level three <clears throat> well we have a chance should have been dead uh, yeah, no. yeah unfortunate yeah uh, yeah, unfortunately, this was his game for sure. Like he, he had the right calls. You know, it, mm-hmm. it would have probably been two one on your end. Um, it probably would have been two one on your end in this situation. You know, like it, he gave it to you two times. You know, and it, just a lot of like to kind of go into it. But overall, like let let's let me ask you what what do you think is the one of the like two like two or three big takeaways from uh, the sets that we learned? Uh, use that trigger a lot. Yep. And be more cautious of when I call and try their assist. Mm-hmm. Not so much of the second one because you were, uh, you had like the right ideas. Remember when we were talking about yeah. the, uh, quick work into the strider calls? You know, that unfortunately just didn't really work out in your favor. Um, mm-hmm. You did, th- they were definitely right calls. Yes. Um, it was just unfortunate timings of when they press buttons. Like, we never even seen that in action in this entire set, but it does work very well. So. Something to keep in mind, like, that is something to utilize a lot more. Uh, recognizing yeah. the teleports is was going to be my number three. Yeah. Um, there was, like, those... Yeah, It worked out against Tim's set, you know, like, where you did the explosion and then just did super to then cancel, you know? Um, that's something you can kind of... Le- you can at least do that as an option, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But recognizing in general for, like, neutral situations where you do have only a certain amount of teleports and you have to make sure not to use them so early and, like, to keep it all in mind... Just something like as a depth player, it's something you gotta keep on learning and to keep on like hell. Even uh, dual cabin, everyone still makes those mistakes. You know, like yeah, it, it still happens from time to time. But of course, getting better at it is where we want to be, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think uh, obviously the uh, the de- devil trigger for sure. N- literally, no reason not to devil trigger like in almost any situation. Da- like just give Dante more tools. Learning to use those tools too, if you want to like see like where, uh, like they could be utilized more. You know, we can go over that for sure. But you'll see it if you just kind of use those tools, right? Like figure yeah. out where those tools really work for you. You know, and not many people utilize Twister. Not many people utilize Jetstream. Not many people utilize you know all this other stuff, right? But they mm-hmm. all are options for every situation that you could possibly be in. You just need to know when to throw them out. You know. Yeah. Um. Another thing, too, uh, we'll learn on the Strider confirms with, like, uh, Ouroboros is level 3, but mm-hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll learn that a little bit later. Like, that's not necessarily that important. Your, your neutral has been increased exponentially as Strider. Yeah. Throwing out the, uh, during that Tim set, too, where throwing out the cats and dogs, throwing out the bird bombs, like, you've been learning to utilize his, his, his tools a lot. And I've been seeing a lot of uh, longevity from that because of that set. So, yeah, overall, I think that from when you first like were really starting, like, do you feel you've gotten better? Like, overall, honestly and truly? Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's good. Like, Why have we been getting better? Because I more often than not, I see you wanting to get some games more than almost anybody in here that's still learning. And you know why you get better? It's because you're playing. You play the yeah. game, you learn the game. You can only learn through so much about reflectiveness and me telling you over words on Discord and into messages, right? And then mm-hmm. there's another thing to read and mm-hmm. watch videos. Put it all in practice. You put it into practice. You get better at it. You took a th- you took a reverse 3-0 from the last time you played Tim. And that's an upgrade. A very big upgrade. And you could have had a 2-1 type of situation for both of these guys that you lost to. You know? Or hell, you could have... Even been a three zero if you were catching them off guard, right? But yeah, you know we we learn from these things. Nothing really to let, nothing negative really. You know that these are just little fi- little small little tweaks. You just need to kind of tighten the screws a little bit more. But overall, it's coming along and very very highly. I gotta praise you because it's a very strong team. You know it's definitely the opposite of what I play like for what you do for Deadpool. But you know it's working out, and I'm very uh very excited to see some more. So uh. Yeah, big ups to you, Brian. You did you did really well in these games for sure. Yeah, well, thank you guys for all the help. <laughs> Made it way yep. easier to pick up the game. Yeah, well, uh, I'll stop the recording. But uh, thanks, Neos, of course, for giving them tips yep. too. You know, yeah. Uh, I'll I'll send you this footage a little bit later. I'll post it up on my channel. 
and once I have that, I'll uh, DM it to you, just the link, and then you can always just go back and just review it at any point. Uh, if you have any other questions, of course, you want to review some more, definitely let us know, for sure. Yeah, we'll do, without a doubt.